Oh, just another good session there with, you know, a really insightful leader who I loved his vulnerability, um, who realized just that uh, he, you know, there was, you know, and we've heard this over and over again. When you have something you hide, people assume it's something worse. You know, <laughs> oh, he's stealing from the company. Oh, he must be this. You know, <laughs> it's like, no, I have this disease. But people, yeah. you know, when we're not authentic, it comes out, but people don't know what we're hiding. Yeah, he's got a second family in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it is interesting. And isn't it uh, also interesting that m- most leaders come to this later in their careers? Yeah. And so, you know, what I'm hoping is as people are listening, because, you know, I did and all this stuff as well. Uh, what I'm hoping is for you listeners that you'll say, hey, I can do that early in my career. I can be more transparent. Because it was interesting. He said, I do these 360s and I get these really great yeah. You know, ratings, except for this one thing, yeah. you know. And, I also, and well, I, and I would add, because a lot of the people we work with, maybe mid-career, they're going, how do I become that C-suite? And a lot of times they lack that authenticity. They're not being right. their true self. So because some people will say, oh, it's easy for him to do it. He was the CEO. But, right. you know, maybe he did even better if he would have learned this earlier in his career. So there is something tied to this with the success you can have early. Yeah, maybe gotten there faster, yeah. actually. You know, it is interesting. I, I, You know, when he said it made me more compassionate it, and more sensitive, particularly to people that had, had any kind of, you know, illness or, or disability and yeah. so on. And then he said the way I countered that is I worked really hard. Yeah. I didn't let it limit me. And I loved when he said I was always grateful that I was just Peter. Yeah. And I thought, what a wonderful, you know, way to recenter yourself and say, hey, there may be things I can't do. I'm grateful that I'm me and I'm good enough. Yeah. I love that. So I like this idea that, that he introduced as well as this idea of equilibrium in our relationships, mm-hmm. because unfortunately it has become a little bit of, you know, modern society where we want to take and we don't want to give uh, unless I'm getting back. And, and that's not what he was talking about there. He was, you know, the idea is you give as much or more than you get. That's how you create this equilibrium, which I thought was really good. Yeah. Uh, another big takeaway for me was relationships. And he said something a little different. You know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, our Harvard study f- friend, Bob Waldinger, who's deep and meaningful relationships. He said, uh, build durable relationships, which I thought was interesting. You know, the, the idea of it's long lasting, mm-hmm. that it's tough, you know, that you can talk about hard things because it's, it's durable. It will survive. So that was a, a, a big takeaway for me durable yeah. relationships no it's good too and as and as well with the people in our care he talked about building you know that how hard it is to build culture in this hybrid always on kind of world and so what do you have to create to bring down anxiety levels create a stable environment as much right. as you can um and there's there's ways we can do that you know we talked about in our book anxiety at work how you bring down uncertainty um no reprisals when people speak up and isn't this an interesting term peaceful a, right. a place where people actually want to come because, yeah, the rest of my life's crazy, but, oh, it's wonderful when I come to work. There's peace there. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, you're getting away from the, well, you know, and we all went through this in the pandemic, right? Yeah. You, you were just a door opening away from total chaos, <laughs> right? Um, lastly, for me, was focus on what you can do. Uh, take intelligent risks and purpose and goals over initiatives. And then lastly, uh, don't hesitate to ask for help. Yeah. Just really such sage advice from really a wonderful, wonderful leader. It was. Yeah, I love that idea, too. I've underlined that that idea of, you know, we have to be able to ask for help. Um, and I, the last thought I had was this idea of you spend more time with the people who are not like you than right. the people who are like you. I mean, what a wonderful message for our divided world right now. So, so we want to thank, um, we want to thank Peter for coming on and sharing his ideas. We want to thank our producer, Blank, Brent Klein, who puts together this uh, mishmash of ideas into something cohesive, to Christy Lawrence, who helps us find amazing people like Peter, and to all of you who listened in. Yeah, and we love speaking at conferences. If you're looking for a, a great uh, presenter, virtually or in person, we speak on topics like culture, teamwork, resilience, resilience, and obviously anxiety in the workplace. So give us a call. We'd love to talk to your event. And just one last uh, shout out for, for Peter. Uh, his book, uh, Taking Stock, is available at fine bookstores everywhere. Follow him on LinkedIn, and you can find a lot of information at Peter J. De Silva. 
Com. Adrian, what did I miss? Well, don't forget to pick up a copy of our book, Anxiety oh, yeah. at Work. You know, that's, that's important. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> and we want to thank you, all of you for listening, for downloading, for sharing the podcast. We appreciate you. And this is just a labor of love for us to bring this to you. And so we hope that you enjoy it. And until next time, we wish you the best of mental health.